Hi guys, how are you doing? Thank you for checking out lesson two of this 10 lesson electric guitar starter course. Now if you're having any problems getting the sound right of your electric guitar or want tips on how to use the amplifier or anything um, or even amp settings, do check out the first lesson in this full playlist. It's here on YouTube but it's easier to navigate on the website and if you have any problems with the open chords that are in this lesson, do check out my full beginners course that's also available at andyguitar.co.uk. Let's have a close up on this awesome riff that we're learning in lesson two. Okay guys, so the chords we're using to play this little riff are an E major chord, an A major chord, which I'm playing in this fashion in sync with my beginner's course. This chord is taught at level one of my beginner's course. And it allows the first finger to stay down between the E, the A, and the final chord, which is the D, which is taught at level two of my beginner's course. So if you need help with any of these individual chords, they'll all be covered at level two, but the change between the E to the A, that's all covered at level one. And uh, the riff we're going for sounds like this. Okay, so we're playing this to a very similar rhythm as we did in lesson one of this little electric guitar short course. Um, but we have a slight difference in that we're playing all six strings for the E and we're playing each of the major chord versions, not the power chord. And we start with just a single strum. So it's strum the E, mute, and then two strums of the A. You can, if you prefer, play an A3 in a line like this. Some people even play an A major like this. However, I just can't advise that because it's got to make it harder. If you look at how much my fingers have to move to get to and from the D major. However, there will be some people that prefer that. And anyway, you're playing E, A and D is totally fine. The main idea of these lessons is to get playing along to the backing tracks and learn the fundamentals of rock guitar. So we strum the E chord once and then mute. I've taken the overdrive down quite a bit on my amplifier. So this has a bit of a 60s vibe. We then move the first finger over, change to the A major, strum twice, and then of course mute straight away afterwards. So to begin the riff again, E, mute, A, A, mute. And then we go for a D major, played just the once, mute once, and then finally it's another pair of A's. So if I play this again really slowly so you can see the changes and you can see the muting, we're going to play this. Notice how the muting makes the changes easier because it gives you more time to change, but the muting is also synonymous with rock guitar. Every rock riff from, you know, Back in Black by ACDC, to, uh, to any number of rock and roll riffs has this mute in it. So that's what we're learning. So we strum E once. We play A twice. We play D major once. Making sure that we don't strum the thicker two strings on the D. Really important. Only want to strum it once. If we strum all six, sounds really bad. Ooh, ugly. But the thinner strings sounds great. Just the once. And then A. Finally twice. Let's play that together and then we'll have a go to the little backing track, which just, we loop this riff for its entirety, but it's a practice in you playing along to a track, which is great practice if you want to play along with a band or just improve your timing in general. So here we are with the E chord in two, three, four. E, mute, A twice, D once, A twice, 
and repeat. Three, four. Repeat. One last time. Slow. And we're going to finish the track as we will generally do. The first chord that starts the song. Give it one long strum and the thing sounds like it's finished. Let's have a listen to the backing track. As always, we have a little counting. One, two, one, two, three, four. Just listen to the track on its own. You can hear the bass, which is playing the root note of each of the chords. And you have to make sure you strum in time with that bass and use the drums to keep you in time. And just as an example. No good to just play the riff in your own time. You have to play it along with boom, bum, bum, bum. And if we just listen one more time, if we strum, mute, oh, that's the end of the track. It is a, a short one, that was exactly a minute long. Um, we're muting on where the, the uh, snare drum happens, which is the kind of da, da, that sort of hit sound. Um, sounds a bit like a clap, I guess. And that is, again, synonymous with rock guitar. Strum, mute, and that mute is on the da. It gives you this big snare drum sound, which is um, what classic rock and many rock genres are all about. Little bit faster than we did in the warm-up, but let's give it a go guys I've got a lot of confidence with this one, especially if you've done the beginners course at level two Let's give it a go together in Two One two three four A D Pause there. That is halfway. Now, so that's halfway through the backing track. We will play through the whole thing, but in case that was something that wasn't happening for you, let me give you a couple of pointers. So keep your strumming hands small and keep your finger motions as small as possible. If you're lifting everything off like this in between every chord change, you're not gonna get there as quick as if we're keeping that first finger down and keeping all your fingers as close to the strings as possible. Same with a strumming hand. If you're doing this, you know, kind of lifting it up here and really sort of attacking it rather than just strumming in a more economical motion, it's, it's gonna take longer to do and you're gonna be more forced with momentum rather than thinking, am I in time with the track? So one more playthrough together, keep the motion small, and let the guitar and the amplifier do the work. You can press down really lightly with an electric guitar uh, if you have your amplifier set correctly, okay? The fuzz on the amplifier will do a lot of the work for you, especially compared to an acoustic. You can strum and play a lot lighter than you do on an acoustic to get a lot more sound because the sound's been amplified. One more play through, just me and you, and then we'll go along to the track. Ready? In two, three, four. E. Change. 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 Even slower. One last time. Uh, 
And one last tip just to finish up before we play along to the whole track, the D chord especially, I'm on a real angle like this. And if you notice, there's no real gaps between my finger. If I'm uh, more like this and more straight, it's a much more uncomfortable way to play this particular D major chord. And if we have the thumb just creeping over the top and the fingers like this, it is a lot more comfortable and allows for easier changes. It's just way less of a stretch in our hand. Whenever you're stretching our fingers, uh, if we're on the thinner strings, we can get an easier stretch if we've got that thumb over the top. That is very much a beginner's tip just to qualify it. Advanced players, no, no, no. But for beginners, this is a real handy tip to have your fingers on this angle when you're playing the thinner strings. And to have all the fingers as far over this good side of the fret as opposed to over here, and it may not ring out as well. Those tips are more in the beginner's course, which is free on the website. Let's play along to this entire track. It's only a minute long, 60 seconds, guys. Let's do this together in two, one. Halfway now. Two more times. Final time. Finish on an E. Let ring. And there we go. That's how to play our second track with E and A and D, open chords. Give yourselves a pat on the back, that was really cool, guys. You can download this video and the entire course that this comes from, plus the backing tracks as audio, the tab, and fun little bonuses, um, all by visiting the website by clicking the links that are on the screen now. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel, and I'm sure I'll see you again in one of my videos. Thank you very much for watching.